Welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me, Bill. And this time we're going to do something which is uh, in response to uh, some comments on several of the videos, actually. And people have been asking if I could do a bit more on using some of the more straightforward test equipment uh, and also a little bit more on some of the more um, commonplace components that sometimes perhaps get overlooked. So I thought I'd start with that humblest of, of semiconductors, the diode. Um, literally diode, two electrodes, anode and cathode. So that's what we're going to do today and we're going to particularly look at it in the um, context of rectification, turning alternating current into direct current. Um, we'll look at um, some of the classic methods of doing that and also I want to make extensive use of the oscilloscope because I think it's just such a great way of visualising uh, what's going on in a circuit and for me that really does um, bring electronic theory to life. So hopefully that'll, that'll be the same for you. If you already know plenty about diodes this video probably isn't for you. If not, um, hang on in there and enjoy and hopefully there'll be something useful. Let's start then by having a look at uh, the properties of a diode and in particular the one we're going to use today, the 1N4007. OK, the diode has a very distinctive symbol um, and I think it's one of the uh, most handy symbols you find on a, on a circuit diagram because diodes are also marked with a, a bar and the bar is the same as the bar on the left hand side of that symbol so you can always easily work out which way around to put the component obviously that does matter so left hand side where the bar is is the cathode right hand side is the anode and in the, from a molecular point of view it consists of a single p-n junction the n-type contains an excess of electrons the p-type containing an excess of holes um, I hesitate to say positively charged, but they are uh, they're an absence of electrons, shall we say. Um, at the junction between them is the depletion layer, and how that depletion layer um, presents itself essentially controls the, the function of the diode. We'll just come to that in a moment. So current can flow from anode to cathode, and it can't flow from cathode to anode. Um, so it's in essentially it's a one-way valve so to speak. When current's flowing we call it a forward bias condition. There is a little bit of a cost to that in that um, there's a voltage drop in f from the forward bias of the diode which is about 0.7 volts for a silicon diode and it's about 0.3 volts for a germanium diode. Uh, and when the diode is reverse biased uh, there's no current flow at all and from a molecular point of view, in forward bias mode, the uh, n-type and the p-type junction are uh, actually in contact with each other and there is no depletion layer to speak of and that permits the passage of electrons freely, freely from, from n towards p. Uh, when the diode is reverse biased, um, the depletion layer uh, gets wider and prevents the flow of current and you might also have spotted that um, two um, plates separated by a gap is um, reminiscent of a capacitor and diodes do indeed have some capacitance in fact some diodes are optimized for capacitance so it's possible by controlling the level of reverse bias using DC um, to control the capacitance of the diode and that sometimes is the basis of a a air actor circuit um, so you can uh, voltage control the capacitor if you like. However that's a very specialised component and certainly well beyond what we're looking at today. Today we're going to use the ubiquitous 1N4007. It's part of a series of diodes from 1N4001 upwards and the 1N4007 has a, a maximum what's called the PIV, the peak inverse voltage of 1000 volts. So the highest voltage you can stand reverse biased is a thousand volts and the only thing that really distinguishes the the preceding uh, components in that series is that the the peak inverse voltage reduces. Uh, when it's forward biased the maximum forward current um, it can handle is one amp 
and its junction temperature range is minus 65 to plus 174. Can't imagine a situation where us experiments are likely to come across minus 65. Certainly, even up here in North Yorkshire in the winter, we don't quite get that cold. However, that's the junction temperature, so um, that's not the enclosure temperature. So m one thing to be aware there is that um, if the diode is uh, too hot to handle, so to speak, and very hot to the touch, then that's the case that's hot. The junction's going to be even hotter, and um, the uh, data sheets make no bones about um, the fact if you've exceeded those temperatures, or indeed that voltage or current, uh, it's likely to result in um, irreversible damage to the, to the component. And what we're going to do with the diode today, we're going to do two things. Um, we're going to use it as a rectifier, and first of all we're going to use this circuit where we're going to take the alternating current on the uh, secondary of the transformer, pass it through um, an ammeter and then we're going to have a resistor uh, which is going to provide a load so we can uh, see what's happening and we'll use the oscilloscope to look at the um, the AC voltage and also the, the DC voltage um, around the um, uh, following the rectification process. That um, form of rectification is called half wave and that's going to become very apparent when you see the, um, the, the trace on the oscilloscope in a few moments. The other circuit we're going to use, which again are potentially very familiar, involves four diodes. Um, again, um, alternating current taken from the secondary of a transformer, uh, fed into the top and bottom of the four uh, diodes forming the bridge rectifier, and then the positive and the negative are taken um, off the left and right hand side. Um, again, with an ammeter and a load. And again, we'll look at um, uh, what is what the rectifier produces. Uh, that's called a full wave rectifier and for both of these circuits we're also going to investigate what happens when we insert a smoothing capacitor between the uh, uh, positive and negative lines and we can see the impact that smoothing capacitor has on the on the quality of the um, output of the rectified AC. Okay let's now um, move on to the bench and have a look uh, first of all at the half wave rectifier. OK, here's the general arrangement then to have a look at the properties of, uh, of a diode. So, got the 1N4007 set up here on the board, AC supply coming in here, and I've got various bits of circuitry we're going to use to, to look at what happens when we use the diode in its rectification mode. So the yellow trace on the oscilloscope is the incoming AC supply, saying about 22.4 volts RMS, and you can see it's uh, the sine wave input. Channel 2 of the scope I'm going to attach now to the, to the output of the rectifier, and straight away you can see um, a very different shaped wave but it's actually, the peaks do coincide, so it is actually in phase there. And what you've got here is half-wave rectification, as it's often called. And I think a couple of important points to note are, first of all, that the scope is in a different uh, volts per division mode for each trace. So the blue trace, which is the rectified side of the diode, if you like, um, is set up on 10 volts per division, whereas the AC trace is on 25 volts per division. So, um, next thing we're going to try out is uh, that that's just rectification going on with no load. So now let's attach a load, and what I've got here is a 200 ohm high wattage resistor, and I'm just going to put that resistor across uh, this rectified, halfway rectified supply, and this meter, which is reading in um, milliamps, uh, is in series with that resistor to measure the current drawn. So I'll connect that up now. And we're getting about 44 milliamps, something like that. And I'm going to just disconnect again. And this time watch the blue trace carefully as I connect it. There we go. As you can see, it's dropping by around a volt when we put the uh, diode rectifier under load. And that's quite normal um, for a power supply's voltage to change slightly when it's under load. And that's often one of the reasons we would use perhaps more sophisticated regulation if we were 
concerned about the, the voltage drop here it doesn't matter and so yeah about well about 44 milliamps now it's now it's stabilized so actually if you're going to um maybe run an electric motor uh drive a light bulb that half wave rectification would be absolutely fine but i think the the first thing to note is of course that um we are doing nothing with the bottom half of the wave what, what effectively is happening is the diode is taking the top half of the yellow trace and that's what you're you're seeing uh, displayed there um, and the bottom half uh, nothing is happening to it the diode is simply preventing it from from arriving there now the the problem here of course is that if you were going to drive something that required a shall we say a, a smoother supply at the minute you've effectively got um, uh, a 50 hertz uh, tone uh, that would be present on that on that dc supply it's actually pulsed dc it's off for almost as long as it's well it's off for the same time as it's on so the obvious way to clear that up is to use some kind of um, smoothing capacitor so here i've got um 470 microfarad capacitor at 25 volts so it's well inside the um, voltage there so i'm going to put that in circuit now and straight away that that, that trace two of the scope is in ac coupling um if i drop that into uh into dc coupling you'll see that there is actually a voltage so straight away that capacitor has completely transformed the the output of the wave it's even having some impact on the ac input but we we'll, won't concern ourselves with that here and what's happening is the capacitor is charging up as the voltage rises and when the voltage drops the capacitor is discharging slowly and it's topping up those um hoops if you like um so if I disconnect again still there most definitely still there when we put the capacitor in circuit uh, it fills in the holes now all that's very well um, and depending on how much power you want to draw from the circuit that may actually be fine but let's now reconnect our load resistor and as you can see it is having some impact on that dc supply two things to notice here so there's a ripple and also we're now drawing about 91 milliamps so um actually it's nearly double so filling in those holes has actually um uh, allowed us to to transmit more energy if you like there's more energy available um, to be used by the circuitry now that ripple isn't actually very much and that may be quite acceptable um if it wasn't acceptable we'd need to do something else so let's now just take that out again just to convince you that um it really is uh, smooth supply so now what i've got here is i've got a 4700 microfarad capacitor so that's 10 times the size okay so i'm going to put that in circuit and the unloaded impact is identical so it's now that large capacitor not the small one and now let's put the resistor in circuit again and cup well yeah roughly the same amount of current being drawn very slightly more another milliamp but as you can see it's still smooth so increasing the value of the smoothing capacitor uh, will smooth out the the circuit um, will smooth out the supply now obviously there is a practical limit even for a 4700 microfarad capacitor but again um, i won't worry too much about that here the point being um, choosing the right value capacitor um, is important and there is a formula for doing that I'll, I'll see if I can find an online calculator and put a link in the description about that. So that's half wave rectification, as it's sometimes called. Um, and using a capacitor gives us a smooth supply. Take that out, and we've got that there, half the current roughly, about 45 milliamps, with that big capacitor in circuit. Um, get nearly 90 milliamps and again what's happening is that capacitor is effectively filling in the gaps so that's half wave rectification here then is the arrangement for full wave rectification and i've got exactly the same ac supply coming in so i've left i've taken it off the trace now and what you're seeing here is the output of the um full wave rectification which is the four diodes in the bridge rectifier arrangement and i've tried to lay them out on the breadboard here in in the way that they're drawn on the diagram so the ac supply 
is fed to there and there. Uh, negative supply comes off here, positive supply comes off there. Things to note on the trace are, first of all, that zero is actually here. So everything you're seeing there now is not, that isn't AC, that's DC. So you've still got the pulsing effect, but this time the gaps have effectively been filled in. So there's a much, um, there's, there's now actually twice as many pulses. That's actually, there's a hundred peaks per, per second now instead of 50. Uh, whereas on the half wave, that would have just been a straight line in between the two peaks. So if we just connect up the load, um, you'll see there is a slight change in the voltage does drop a little as we'd expect and we're getting about 86 milliamps being drawn so that's uh, certainly better than the half wave it's, the half wave was just uh, just about 44 45 milliamps and that's because we've got twice as many peaks and the other benefit of full wave rectification is if we take the same 470 microfarad capacitors we had before and we now put that across the supply you see straight away we get smooth DC and I'm now going to apply exactly the same load and as you can see yeah we've had a voltage drop as you'd expect but there's actually now 109 nearly milliamps flowing and there isn't actually any ripple so with four diodes the 470 microfarad capacitor is um, capable of filling in the gaps. So that's full array of rectification and I think the most obvious thing to comment on there is yes you've had to use another three diodes however the reduction in size of the capacitor that's actually ten times um, the value of that one in let's say small portable equipment you might actually appreciate um, the ability to have a much um, smaller smoothing capacitor. So there we have, that's full wave rectification. Okay, well that's the diode in its um, role as half wave and full wave rectifier. Hopefully that's um, been useful and made some sense. Maybe encouraged you to experiment yourself. Uh, I just think it's great that um, an oscilloscope allows you to really see what's going on in a circuit. Um, I always learn lots when I'm making these videos and you know I'm certainly no expert so uh, you know I encourage you to have a go, experiment and, and enjoy you know and if you don't understand something keep on digging and see what you can find out. Hope you've um, enjoyed the video. If you have, please click thumbs up. If not, you can click the thumbs down. Either way, thanks very much for watching. Please consider subscribing. That would help me. And we'll see you on the next one.